Nice kitty. Good kitty. Yeah, you like that. Oh, hi there. Welcome to night number two of the 11 nights of Halloween. I was just petting my cat here and I... Oh, he is too real. And when you say things like that, it hurts his feelings. Nice kitty. Nice... Ow! He just bit me. Why would he do that? Oh, I'm bleeding. Speaking of cats, that's what tonight's story is about. I do hope you enjoy, stupid cat. Ugh. Last winter, I had forgotten to fully close my back door and was awoken by a loud scratching noise and a faint but distinct meowing noise coming from just outside the door. I got out of bed and walked into the kitchen, where I was greeted by an icy cold breeze and a pair of glowing yellow eyes peering in through the crack in the doorway. I cocked my head to the side and squinted at the dark shape that was now purring and meowing from the pitch blackness of my back porch. I called to it. What's the matter, kitty? Are you hungry? This was followed by an excited meow and more purring. Not wanting to spook it, I kept my kitchen light off and opened the fridge, digging around for a bit to find the last bit of soy milk that was meant for my morning bowl of cereal. I grabbed the nearly empty carton and poured the contents into a small bowl that I carefully slid in front of the doorway. I could hear the cat make a series of sniffing sounds, as if it were unsure if it should come inside and attempt to take a drink. This was followed by a deep growl of disapproval at the offering, as well as a sudden swipe of blackness at the bowl, sending it tumbling across the floor. Oh, you don't like soy milk, kitty? I'm sorry. Let me look for something else. I don't have cat food, though. A few meows came from the cat and a couple of purrs as I began digging into the fridge again. I managed to find a partially eaten pack of salmon I had gotten as a free sample from the new supermarket that opened a few weeks earlier. I gave it a quick smell to make sure that it wasn't spoiled, grabbed the bowl from the floor and shook the crumbled salmon bits into it. I slid the bowl back across the floor in front of the doorway, and once again, a sniffing sound came from the cat before a long pause of what seemed to be its uncertainty about the salmon. Kitty, I promise you it's not spoiled, I reassured. The deep growling began again, only this time it seemed more aggressive and much deeper than earlier. I could see its eyes squint a bit, before a sudden blur of blackness swiped at the bowl and sent it crashing into the wall. I won't lie, I was angry frustrated at the cat and its finicky eating habits. I was trying to be nice, and now here I was wishing that I had just slammed the door shut and gone back to bed. I shouted, Cat! What? What do you want? A small meow came and a soft purr, and I just slapped my palm against my forehead and sighed. I opened the fridge again and gave a scan around the shelves with my tired eyes, looking for something, anything, to satisfy this cat. I found a pack of steaks tucked away in the back that I'd put there to thaw for a dinner date that never happened. It had been over a month ago at that time, and the steaks had gone completely rancid. Good thing the plastic was still on, or I would have had to have thrown away my entire fridge. I gagged at the putrid smell as I peeled open the package. This was followed by an excited meow from the doorway. Bon appetit, kitty. I said as I tossed the slimy steaks one after another outside the door. I could hear the cat viciously devouring and practically choking on the rotten meat before giving off one final meow as its yellow eyes vanished from the doorway. I walked over and glanced outside at the cold winter night. It was snowing, and there was a bloodied mess from the meat in the snow, but no cat prints only footprints and handprints. Like someone walking on all fours. I keep the door locked now. <laughs>